How's it going everyone? It's Keith here from Performante. It is May 3rd, 2022, and in this video, we'll be going over a bunch of stuff in the realm of DeFi. We'll first take a look at the new DeFi suite that we're gonna be coming out with. We have spreadsheets we, from Google Sheets. We have PDFs all going over how to best utilize the DeFi ecosystem that is flourishing. Well, maybe not in TVL right now, but looking at the longer term timeframes, DeFi is significantly increasing in total value locked TVL and is withdrawing capital from the traditional markets overall. The second thing we're going to be going over is a great platform to look for different yields on basically any single chain or network that you're looking to generate yield on. And then the final thing we're looking at is the spooky swap uh, export or advanced see a section or area that allows you to really easily identify potential opportunities where you can have a more visual understanding of the potential impermanent loss that could occur so really good and useful tool and i like to combine that with beefy swap because you do get some really solid yields utilizing a yield optimizer So let's jump right into it here. The first thing that we're going to be looking at is the D5 for dummies PDF here. We're not going to get super into it, but as we can see, we are basically done at this point. We are refining, we are fine tuning, and we are trying to provide the most amount of value that we can possibly create um, in, in a single PDF and some Google Sheets that will allow you to have a good understanding of the low, medium, and higher risk opportunities there are in the world of DeFi. This is the platform that I was talking about earlier in the intro. It's called Coindix. I will put the links in the comment section below. But what this allows you to do is we can see a list of networks or chains. And if we click this three dots, we can see that it basically has every single chain or any single chain that you're looking to look for yield on try to find one that isn't available, pretty hard to do, that you can actually generate yield on where there's enough liquidity providing the commissions that will be paying you the liquidity provider. But basically, uh, for me at least, I mainly am utilizing BNB or the Binance Smart Chain, AVAX or Avalanche, Phantom, FTM, as well as the Terra Luna network with Luna and a little bit of Solana. Um, not too much right now, but I have in the past. Tulip Garden is a pretty uh, useful one in the realm of Solana ecosystem. So this is Coindex. Not going to uh, get too off track here in terms of talking about different networks. We have really five different settings or categories or filters that we can use along with using the APY filters. So if you want it above a certain APY, we can add it right here and if we want it above a certain TVL just to ensure that we're entering pools that have a little bit more confidence if you see for example a TVL that has 12,000 you know as a single person you could put that in or 26,000 you know and 1.9 would be a little bit harder but these amounts would be a pretty speculative play because um, there's not a lot of pool that means there's not a lot of people trading it that means the price is probably going to go down you're going to have a lot of impermanent loss there's just uh, not a lot of great things associated with entering pools that have a very small TVL. So let's just keep that in mind. So the first thing that we want to do is go into the liquidity pool sticks. This would be pairs where you would get potential and permanent loss if you have not exactly one in correlation between no asset number one and asset number two. For example, the phantom tomb pair as a liquidity pool would see very little and permanent loss. Another example would be the Luna and B Luna pair on the Terra Luna network. So those would be two very low impermanent loss pairs to enter as a liquidity pool. And the more volatile the two assets are, the more impermanent loss you are going to see in your portfolio and in your potential pool here that you enter. So we can see in terms of APY, I just put it as APY. You can set it to TVL if you want to, just to give you the highest TVL at the start. So we can see this is on Convex and it has a $2.7 billion TVL and it goes down from there. So you can kind of see if you want to be an absolute degen in the world of DeFi and look through the highest APYs first, or if you want to be a little bit more conservative and look through TVLs first, you kind of have your options there. 
And then single-sided stake has zero impermanent loss, which is fantastic. You obviously have the risk of the price of the asset moving to the downside. And if that doesn't compete with the rewards that you're earning, you're not really going to be going anywhere. You're going to be losing value in your portfolio. But overall, this is a good way to completely mitigate any sort of impermanent loss, just removing a single layer of risk, basically. No impermanent loss is single-sided stakes, or if you have things like Balancer or another form of reward system where it will pay you any sort of impermanent loss that you may experience, that's a good option as well. And then stablecoin is self-explanatory. These are stablecoins that are usually pegged to the US dollar. I don't think there would be anything that would be paired, anything in the top TVL range that would be paired to any other currency other than the US dollar. But those are your main options there. Just wanted to go through this quick platform because it's really useful. It allows you or it allows the user to really quickly navigate the world of DeFi no matter what chain you're using. The next thing we're going to be going over is Beefy Finance. I do use Beefy Finance quite often. It's one of my favorite yield aggregators, I must say. And very similar to Coindex, we have a list of chains or networks available that we can select. We currently have selected the Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, Phantom, and the uh, Crypto.com or Kronos network. And we can see those are our four filters. We can also add different filters on Beefy Finance with the vault type. You can choose two different assets in a liquidity pool. Um, you can also enter more than two assets if you're using something like Beethoven X, but that's for another video altogether. And then you have your single-sided staking or single-sided liquidity provision using the single assets, as we can see in the vault types there. So why do I like Beefy Finance so much? If we can just take a quick look here, it shows you the APY historic average or historic range that it's been in using this line chart. And this allows you to really quickly gauge where the API APY is going. So we can see with this one, lost AVAX, it has an extremely low TVL. Uh, let's see. Yeah, $16,000. So like a single individual could just enter that entire thing and just like take it out. It could be one individual, you never know. Um, and then the TVL, sorry, the APY as well is moving to the downside. So that's not great to see. Usually you like to see it maintaining the TVL as well as the APY or seeing increasing amounts of capital flowing into the pool as well as seeing the APY increase as well. So we're not seeing that. So that's why this is an automatic I wouldn't even look at it. And then we can see another one here it is paying out 1.3%. So we'll just take a quick look here. Take a look at the monthly. It is kind of moving to the downside. You had a massive spike, probably not going to get a yearly. So that's all right. It is moving to the downside. It was at, let's say 40,000 just in April 27th. So not too long ago. And then now in May 3rd, we're at 11,000. So a pretty big move to the downside in terms of APY. So I think we could definitely do better. And the next thing is the PAE AVAX. And then PAEs, uh, the one that I have been looking at. And then a couple rows down, this is the one that I did end up looking at. We could just continue looking at all of them, but the PAE FTM on Spooky Swap is the one that we'll be taking a look at, paying out 4,879% annualized percent a year and for the vault it is only paying at 326 and the trading pair or trading APR is paying 90 percent and then daily you're getting around 1.14 percent per day give or take um, and this is already counting the performance fee which is 45 percent so once we click in here this is what we see here this currently has 340 around $50,000, $247,000 currently in the total value locked, which is not substantial. Ideally, I'd like to see um, at least a mil or a couple million in there. But at the end of the day, this is a pretty major degen play. You're not going to be playing with a lot of your capital in this. It'll be a small percentage of your actual DeFi portfolio that you're going to be putting into these. And, and you have to be very active. So if you're not active in managing your portfolio, in these types of plays, you will incur significant and permanent loss. So it's basically a swing trade that you have to heavily manage that you can't set any sort of stop loss because you have to do a series of steps in order to actually get out of the asset that you're holding. 
So um, we're going to get into a little bit more into the next phase, which is looking at Spooky Swap. We can see, I just want to touch on the fact that you can actually purchase insurance from Nexus Mutual and Insurace, which are two reputable insurance providers or coverage providers in the realm of DeFi. So those are pretty good options if you are looking for a little bit more safety while you are entering these degenerate plays. And we can see the performance fees for 4.5% and it is already subtracted from the displayed APY. And what's great about this and why I like BV Finance as well, another reason is it has no deposit fee and no withdrawal fee. They do have a performance fee while you're in it, but that's basically if you were highly leveraged using some sort of futures, you'd be paying continuously a fee to, con to keep that position open. So it's for, m for me at least, a way to view the performance fee. So now what we want to do is actually look at Spooky Swap by clicking the buy token or add liquidity. Buy token will take you to the PAE and FTM swap and then add liquidity is where you would add these two different assets into the pool and then you would receive a LP token for a representation of the share that you own in that pool and then you would put that liquidity pool token in Beefy Finance. And then Beefy Finance would just auto compound it for you instead of you having to do it by going into the PAE platform, redeeming its native token, selling 50%, selling putting it in, or I guess keep, keep, selling 50%, putting it in FTM, keeping the rest in PAE, and then putting that two, those two assets in the liquidity pool, so on and so forth. Hopefully that makes sense. This is the RidePay Finance. I have heard of it. It's been around for a decent amount of time. If you don't know what it is, it is a algorithms, algorithmic stablecoin on Phantom pegged to the price of one FTM. It is definitely not pegged to the price of one FTM. It is extremely volatile, but um, that's what their ideal goal is, which they are not really doing too well because I did trade PFTM and it absolutely crashed and now it's way above it. It's definitely not pegged like, for example, Tomb or Luna or another type of um, more stable pair that you may potentially encounter. Um, I checked for an audit on RiPay Finance and they got an audit from some unknown auditing firm I've never heard of. Um, I checked into them and they actually did do the audit. Uh, they're not super famous or well known. I have not heard of them through my research in security firms, but they don't seem very big. And um, all the previous auditing projects that they've done are very small. So I'm assuming they're just doing it for money because there's obviously no other reason why they would um, do it. And they are a legitimate company. We can see um, about, they have a whole section where they have all these people who are auditors and lead developers and are getting paid. So um, kind of a conflict of interest, keep that in mind, but there is, a small layer of legitimacy, let's say. Um, there's no guarantee at all, especially because it's not a super large auditor. There's not multiple auditors. Um, there's not a whole lot of information on the single auditor that did audit this project, but it has been around for a decent amount of time, decent while, so there are some positives to that as well. So now we're gonna go into the spooky swap here. We're just gonna go into, I believe, add liquidity. Let's take a look here. I do not believe that is the correct one. So we will click buy token. There we go. So you normally see this where you see these cute little cats here and this little devil cat. What you can do to get into the export mode where they call it, where you can actually get the trading view chart open and everything. Before actually clicking it, you will have to actually connect your wallet. Keep that in mind. If you don't connect your wallet, you will not be able to see the trading view chart and in the price action or anything. So you have to first connect your wallet. And once you do, you click this little cat here, which will turn on expert mode and that will open up the spooky swap platform that I've been loving so much. So first couple things I do want to go over. This is exactly like trading view where you have all these different options. You don't have your saved tools or anything, but you can draw lines. You can go to different time frames. You can use the line chart if you want. You can add indicators. So it's super useful. The main use I'm really finding with this is instead of pairing it with Phantom, which also moves in value, um, I actually like to pair it in USD. So then you're able to easily identify the price, which is 
actually $39 right now, which is kind of surprising. And we'll get into why I'm looking at this one compared to most of the other potential pairs that are still paying out pretty solid APYs. But um, what's also interesting before diving into that is we see the trade history. So that's pretty interesting. So you can see the trades that are occurring. Um, you can see the size of them, which is, I haven't really seen too much. I know Serum offers it, but um, on Phantom, I think this is something I haven't seen at least in my uh, research in the world of Phantom. And then the liquidity history is pretty interesting as well, where you're able to understand the liquidity of the tokens. I believe this is uh, people adding in tokens. So we can see 1.63 Phantom is around 0 0.0319 PAE. So this is someone putting it in, $2.50. Um, someone taking out 1.6K. So you can see people are either adding liquidity, taking away liquidity, which either shrinks or expands the distance between the bid and ask. So you get your bid and ask spread and the tightness or looseness of that, where you're gonna have to pay more for that difference, depending on how much liquidity there is within the market. Also, if that's it's moving and all that stuff, but uh, it's a pretty big factor. So now the big question, also, before we get into that, uh, you can set limit order limit orders, which is really cool. You won't be able to utilize them if you're in the liquidity pool because you own the LP tokens. So you unfortunately can't put a stop loss on an LP token, although you could set an alert to remind yourself, but there's no automatic stop loss that allows you to sell if you hit a certain threshold of impermanent loss, unfortunately, yet. I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that I think that will come sooner or later. So why do I think this one in particular is a decent trade, at least, for a swing trade? Let's still take a look at the daily chart and then take a look here and then let's see if we can get it to log. There we go. So this is the value of PAE over time, and we can see it is moving to the downside, but we've, we're, we're basically in an uptrend at this point, and what really is interesting to me is we broke out of this long consolidation just below the $33, $34 -ish range, which we'll take a look at in a little bit more detail, but we can see we are seeing the increase in buy pressure coming into the market, leading up to that ascending triangle formation pushing to the upside and we have seen in the previous time frames we'll look back on a little bit smaller of a time frame we do see these major pushes break to the upside and this is what we're looking to ideally capture if we're getting paid one percent or a little bit more than one percent on top of that that's just fantastic and ideally what we're looking for is for it to either go sideways or up as long as it's not going down and we'll take a look at potential stop losses and ways to manage risk in this sort of swing trade in the next couple of minutes here but looking at the long term time trend long term time frames allows you to have a pretty good understanding of the overall trend with these hyperinflationary tokens it will most likely be to the downside but the big question is are you holding during uh price breaks down, down below support, or are you gonna be a little bit too stubborn? Because at, at this sort of strategy, for this sort of strategy, you have to be very all right with cutting your losses because these assets can trend down quite substantially. So you got your low here, and then you got a major level of resistance somewhere around here. because so you see it hold, and then it became resistance, and it became resistance twice right there. And it was also resistance there. So that's going to be basically like a final target potentially. And then you can also see that we are getting a series of lower highs. And this is just going to be a, a guide. It's not going to be an absolute line or anything like that, like so. So we can see we are on an, up, we are on an uptrend. And when we go to a smaller time frame, let's first go to the four hour. We can see we've been in a consolidation, contracting in volatility for a while. You can see a strong level of resistance that's been held and then a strong trend line connecting to higher lows, which is our ascending trend line connecting to higher lows, creating our triangle. And then we just recently broke out of it. We do see a little bit of resistance if we are taking a look kind of in confluence with our first line. And then we see a previous support turn into a resistance, probably going to be some zone of sensitivity, which we are currently testing right now. So in terms of the overall trade, um, here's really what I'm thinking. The main level, let's just go and find this guy, the brush. 
So the main zone that I'm looking to enter is pretty close to this area right here, this major level of previous level of resistance, new level of support. So I'm assuming there's going to be some level of support right here for the price as long as it is above that, my trade is looking valid. If it breaks below and does any sort of consolidation below this, if it's a quick wick down overnight and it's kind of consolidating above it like so, I don't really mind. But if we see a clear break where you see candles closing and it's trading anywhere within this range here, I am going to 100% close the position there is no doubt about it because this is my zone of stop loss and final level of support that I'm looking at. If it does this and it goes down and it comes back up, now you got a completely different structure. If it is still looking great, that's fantastic. But um, this is the particular trade that I'm looking for. And if it doesn't meet the requirements, I'm basically going to pull out because I don't know what's happening. The only point at which I feel comfortable entering and keeping the trade open is if we get some sort of consolidation within this range, we're looking to enter within the low of the range right here. And as long as it's holding above this major, major zone around 33, then I feel confident to be in the trade. Once it go, if it goes and once inevitably, I'm sure, goes below this zone, then I do not feel comfortable being in the trade and I will just completely get out of my liquidity pool, completely exit out of PAE, keep my capital in Phantom and just go about my merry way looking for another yield, just taking this small L and completely accepting it. Well, that's now the end of this video. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you found this video to be useful, educational, or even entertaining, we would really appreciate a nice thumbs up so we know that we should continue making videos like this. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time, have a good one, traders.